What is up? I'm Moana Turtle, and today we're going to be talking about the Pokemon market or the secondary market. We have two big topics that we're covering today. Obviously, we're going to be hitting Hidden Fates, the biggest craze since I have no idea when. And then the other topic we're going to be hitting is kind of like a history thing. It is base set Shadowless, kind of like the second set to be printed like ever and the reason we're going to be talking about that is if you were to quickly take a guess in your head like oh how much would it cost to create a collection of base set shadowless not psa 10 not psa 9 maybe not even 8 so like mid to low grades psa or just like raw cards for a binder collection take put a like number in your head how much you think it would cost and i bet it's much lower than that so that was that's what we were talking about today uh, before we go any further I just want to give a shout out to uh, the people that help kind of like make the discord what it is today I think we're about like 50 members and it's great to chat with you guys uh, huge shout out to Pokemon lover 95 basically the architect of the whole thing and also shout out to the mods that kind of help keep the peace uh, Tim rookie and low I'm still not sure how to pronounce that <laughs> so hidden fates the prices are continuing to drop Today, during the day, I saw a Charizard for 325 and oh man, that was hard for me to pass up. But ultimately I did because I'm still convinced the prices are going to continue to go down. Uh, we'll talk about prints, printing and like just my own speculations about that as we go. So let's get over to our first site, TCG Player. They are running a promotion, you can see at the top, 8% bonus bucks on all singles. So. Hidden Fates, I still think will continue to decline. So my own thoughts would be to still hold off, but hey, that 8 percent's there. If you are gonna make a purchase, you know, make sure, oh no, I think it's automatic. And, uh, but maybe this is worthwhile for uh, the Shadowless set. <clears throat> but let's take a look. So the still the most expensive cards are that Charizard, Cynthia, Shrine, and Tapu Lele. So let's see how they're doing on eBay. I think the, Sometimes the eBay is lower, sometimes TCG Play is actually lower. So let's just take a look as far as the market price and kind of like how they're going for. So Charizard's kind of just broke the $400 mark, you know, rewind like a week or two ago. They're five, 600 and they're declining fast, you know. The ETBs just hit and then the, these collection, Pokeball collection, premium, super duper collection are going to be coming out and it's just going to be adding more Charizards to the, the PSA grades are starting to come back and all the tens are out there let's take a look so this is buy it now listed recently so yep the psa 10s they, they don't even have them back yet but they're still posting them so psa 10 looks like 2015 i think there's some closer to a thousand and other buy it nows are there's not that many in the 400 range so this is one where tcg player seems to have more at that cheapest level but every once in a while yeah, again there was a 320 at 325 today but i resisted let's go to sold listing oh 430 here's a 350 bgs 10 just you know it's getting close to that thousand dollar mark you know that pristine that's all for 10k that's a wonder if that guy's kicking himself and we keep saying best offer accepted so less than 400 so we're continuing to decline and um yeah, if I were to guess, we're going to see this trend continue now that the PSAs are coming back. All right, so here is a PSA sold, wow, 25. Less than 25, I imagine that's going to significantly reduce. Again, there's one that's 15 at the moment. Let's go over to Cynthia. Cynthia is still steadily declining. However, I would say that there is less, uh, there's not an overabundance of supply. TCG player around 68 and for eBay we do see a 65 here and then occasionally 70s and stuff like that 60 right there from Canada and for sold but you know if you keep an eye out some of them are going for 45 uh, potentially even a little bit lower so Cynthia is still on the decline I remember kind of like at release it was kind of around 100 so it's already like half the value that it started at let's move over to shrine uh, about 30 for TCG player and I'm guessing we'll see about the same for on uh, eBay. Yep, here's one just exactly for 30 which is kind of on the lower end of things. Yeah so they're not yet to break that 20, 20 in the 20s but to be honest I feel like 
This one I think will probably stay. I think Shrine of Punishment will always be a useful card and or you know for till it rotates. Uh, I don't remember when I said it was introduced. But I kind of doubt we'll see too many sold in the 20s. Let's just take a look at sold listings. Yeah. Uh, 25. Okay, so yeah, maybe you can get snag them for 20s, but I do feel like I can't imagine it bottom out any further. On to Lele's. Such a cool card, but it's not really in standard rotation anymore. And yeah, 30, 34. That says a lot. So uh, this thing is similar. I can't imagine this thing will really break 20s or anything that's in the 20s will just quickly be gobbled up. I feel like I would buy, you know, these gold cards, when you think about it, uh, people have been saying the pull rates are 1 out of 100 for them, and yes, maybe Lele is the, the, potentially the best, or Shrine and Lele are the best ones, uh, but for 1 out of 100, to the most expensive ones, to get them in $30, like, that's a good deal. Uh, if you're going to be completing like a binder collection, actually that's what we have this tab for, again, I, if I had to guess, I think everything will continue to decline quite a bit. But this 8%, you know, I while I don't think you should get by those top tier, those top four, but a lot of these other ones, a lot of these that are below $10 at this point, maybe this is good enough. If you want to complete your collections and it's like, all right, well, I need, uh, you know, Eevee for 11. I feel like that's pretty good. And then all these miscellaneous extra ones for under $10. That's a, wow, Rainbow Birds, under $10. You know, that's like... Packs at MSRP are five dollars a pack, and you know, just think about think about that one. It's like, oh, you know, should I continue to buy more packs to open, or should I start going into that singles? You know, even even I'm starting to scratch my head <laughs> with some of the openings. So, man, a lot of them under five dollars. So, a lot of these cards, maybe they're getting close to the bottom out because you can't imagine they go much lower. But yeah, hidden fates. Hitting the bottom, and actually, let's just talk about my own thoughts about prints. In my opinion, if I were to guess based on no real evidence, if I were just to speculate, I think they're going to print this set into oblivion. Like, why wouldn't they? It's still so hard to find. If I had to, you know, if I had a mission to go find an ETB in the wild right now, not online, to find it at $50. I might fail. I would have to drive for hours going to every, you know, every store to find it and I still might come up short. So the demand is so high right now. So, you know, I think that this product is going to be around for a long time. You still find Shining Legends generations every once in a while. Game Nerds just listed uh, Shining Legends. You can get it for less than $50. And I think on Amazon for the longest time it's been there for like 40. So Dragon's, sure, if you can't find the Dragon's Magic, because I don't, I don't think anyone wants to find it. No one's looking for it. But Hidden Fates, this thing is going nowhere anytime soon. There's only going to be more and more and more and more supply for a long time. Maybe, maybe it's almost like, you know, evolutions. How long will we see XY stuffed into our collection boxes? Maybe for another year. <laughs> Could be maybe longer uh all right i think that's a good transition point let's start moving over to shadowless uh I'll put somewhere you know this uh come my current collections i do have a psa set ranging from i think my venusaur is all the way down to a three but then most of them are five and above there's some nines in there charizard i think is a six but so let's take a look pokemonprice.com super useful website and back to what we we're talking about in the very beginning like what you thought it might cost to put together a PSA collection of a certain grade or a binder collection for Shadowless you know I bet it is cheaper in reality than you may have thought without you know without looking into it but uh, I guess we can do these are just all last sales and we'll go into I think Charizard and Blastoise specifically obviously the Charizard are right, 13,000 for the 10 and I don't know, let's see, Zapdos for, I feel like Zapdos are always really cheap, surprisingly. Nido King doesn't get a lot of love at 325. So these are PSA 10s for Shadowless. And, you know, a handful of them are in like the 3 400 range, so that's not bad. But, all right, well, that's still way too expensive. Let's drop down to a seven. Let's see how low they get. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. A bunch of them are less than $100. Most are less than 50. Some of them are in the 20s. Clefairy, like 20. 
Uh, sure, Charizard will always be in the hundreds. Let's see. All right, well, we want to have Charizard in our collection at a reasonable price. Let's go down to five. To be honest, I have no idea what constitutes a five, but even the most expensive cards. Well, nine tails, four fifty. Something's wrong with that. Like, get down to a five just so we have the a PSA slab of the Shadowless stuff. You can get almost all of it. You know, you can get multiple cards for under a hundred dollars. So. Uh, kind of like what my own goals are. I think eventually I want to get to finish out the nines and get Charizard aside. Nothing more. I guess Blastoise. Some of them are over 200. So maybe maybe I'll start with eight. Eh, no, I probably I'll probably stick with nine as kind of like what I want to complete as far as full sets go. Let's look into some specific ones. Obviously. Charizard is one and let's just see all right well when I want to complete my nine well over in the thousands anywhere from 11 to 1600 again if we down took it to like a five or seven there's a lot of overlap in like the five six seven range so I feel like even if you stay at seven you can get it for 300 eh, that's still kind of expensive on to Blastoise, big boy turtle. Obviously we're interested in him. Let's see if, what the nine, uh, less than 300. Actually, this one's interesting because it seems like it's on a steady decline, which I find very interesting. Can't imagine this is still heavily being graded, but actually kind of like when we're talking about, I don't think shiny Charizard's in this database yet, but I imagine in the next month there will probably be PSA 10 Chinese Charizard. I bet there will be like, mul like multiple hundred, hundreds of them. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Versus Blastoise, which there's 330 PSA 9s and only 40 PSA 10s. And I can't imagine that that's ever going to go up at a very alarming rate. So, you know, the whole point of this and the point of a lot of these, whatever subject we're hitting is while all the focus uh, is on like the latest and greatest. And yes, this, the latest is great. It really is. Uh, in my opinion, like my eyes are still on some vintagey stuff and we can kind of look through here. Yeah. Blastoise, some shadowless Blastoise for under a hundred bucks. That, that's great in my opinion. And then let's talk about binder collection, you know, um, a lot of these topics we talk about in the discord and one thing that was mentioned about like between binder collections and PSA graded cards is that PSA graded cards are not great for showing off. Some people showed some really cool like frames you can put some stuff in there. I'm not crazy about that. I think some people say that it can even get like sun damage even when it's in the case but that, that aside my point is a lot of my PSA stuff never sees the light of day. Like it's just kind of put aside it's part of my collection. And let's say I have like, oh, super nice PSA 10 jar that like, I'm not gonna leave that out. <laughs> That's gonna be like in storage safe. Uh, but you know, a binder collection where it doesn't even need to be near mint light play, near mint, you probably can't even tell. You would have to like take it out and really look at it. Even mod play can, will be fine in a binder. It's just something you wanna flip through every once in a while to look at. Um, Though even to just fill that out is going to be surprisingly cheaper. And we're going to look at, so TCG player again, 8% back. Maybe this is a good way to use it if you want to complete some binder collections. Even Charizard. Uh, so I did mod limp light and I believe that should work. Let's just take a look through here. What the, oh, okay. So sometimes I get confused how this website works. I'm guessing that's damaged or we'll, we'll leave out damage in the heavy played. But even my plate, I feel like is okay for a binder collection. So you're looking at 150 for the most expensive card. But then from there, like things are pretty cheap. Zapdos, 12, 1250. I think it's actually like 40. Oh no, 20, $20 for a shadowless foil. Um, Alakazam, like all these super cheap. Uh, and there's only 16. So sure, Charizard aside, most of them you can get like half the collection with $200, uh, probably less. So, you know, for, for a lot of people that are kind of interested in binder collections, which I think is great, to be honest, I want to complete everything. I feel like it's realistic to get a complete set of everything, maybe not first edition, um, but most sets in a binder 
for a reasonable price you know you don't need near mint in my opinion just go like play or something like that and yeah guys even shadowless super doable so um so that's gonna be it for today's pokemon market uh video let me as always let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below or let me hit me up on discord just uh kind of throw out there you know i think this would be a good topic i kind of mentioned recently that we're going to do gold stars the reason i'm holding off is i'm waiting for a very cool package to come in the mail that i want to include in that so the gold star video is still coming and um yeah hidden fates still on that steady decline i don't think it's going to stop anytime soon shadowless base shadowless I definitely suggest if you have never looked into it, at least consider it. Take a look at the prices. My bet would be like, oh wow, these are lower than I would expect. This is from 1999, are you serious? That's 20 years ago. And I think it's a great place to kind of like build out your collection. And then then you can move forward from there, you know, go into the 2000s or whatever. Um, but yeah, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'm Moana Turtle and I'll catch you guys next time.